stick it. Morton turned his attention to another substance doing the rounds at student parties. By adding alcohol to sulfuric acid, the students produced a volatile liquid known as sweet oil of vitriol. When inhaled, it resulted in a very decent high. Whoa, this is strong stuff. What is coming out of this is a vapor or liquid that we now know as ether. Ether was a popular alternative to alcohol for teetotalers and was sometimes used in pain-relieving medicines. And it was this pain-killing effect that got Morton interested. Morton started out by using a few drops of ether to numb the mouth. Then he used quite a lot to knock out a spaniel. But what he really needed to do to prove that it was safe and effective was try it on a human. With no other human volunteers to hand, Morton decided to try it out on himself. He got a handkerchief and applied some ether, looked at his watch, and then stuck the handkerchief over his face. A few minutes later, he woke up, but he was unable to move. As he later wrote, I was terrified that I would die in that position and the world would laugh at my folly. But the world never got a chance because he made a full recovery, and he was now very, very keen to try this out on someone else. After successful trials on unsuspecting patients, Morton returned to Harvard Medical School. They agreed that Morton should have a second chance to demonstrate pain relief in the daunting domed surgical theater at Massachusetts General Hospital. The date was set for October the 16th, 1846. Just 16 days time. On that Friday, this room would have been absolutely packed with medical folk. Many of them expecting and some of them hoping that the uppity dentist would fail again. An eminent and extremely skeptical surgeon had been booked for the operation. At 10 a.m., the appointed hour, there was no sign of Morton, so the surgeon prepared to operate. His patient was a young man with an enormous tumor on his neck. He would have been strapped down because he was going to be awake and screaming throughout. But before the surgeon could apply his scalpel to the quivering flesh, Morton came bursting into the room. He was carrying this. It's an ether inhaler, and he'd had it built overnight. No time at all to test it, so he must have been feeling almost as anxious as a patient, but he had no idea if it was going to work. Filling the inhaler with ether, Morton handed it to the patient. He was relying on a complicated and untested system of valves to give the right dose. His future depended on this test succeeding the Boston surgeons would not give him another chance. When the patient reported feeling a little bit groggy, Morton took it back, and then he turned to the surgeon and said, Sir, your patient is ready. They were used to operating on people who were screaming and trying to get off the table. So anything that held you on the table, even if you waved your arms and legs around a bit while it was going on, that was preferable to you being wide awake. So the surgeon picked up his scalpel and he started to cut. From the patient there came not a sound. The operation was long and complicated, but also successful. At the end, the patient reported that he had felt no more than a scratch. This was an extraordinary moment in the history of surgery, an operation performed without pain. At the end, the surgeon turned to the audience and he said, gentlemen, this is no humbug. There's a wonderful letter from the professor at Harvard to Morton saying everyone will want a share of your great discovery. I'm not trying to take a share, but we do need to give it a name. I would suggest the name anesthesia. Um, and we need to give it a name because everyone throughout the world for the rest of human history 
we'll need to talk about what's just happened and what this is. News spread about ether around the world within six months, which given the communications network at the time, I think was highly significant. What anesthesia does is act as a bit of a watershed and the ripples sort of permeate out through society. And there are lots of wider humanitarian movements like the anti-slavery movement, the reform of prisons. You just get the general sense that patience and social tolerance of pain um, is decreasing. <laughs> 